All right, folks, listen here. This ain't your average everyday run of the mill podcast. We got Jeremy Miguel, 217 classmate. Buckle your seatbelts, get ready, because this is a crazy one. Enjoy. I have no doubt in my mind that, you know, especially before boot camp, I, I think I, because to me, none of the, uh, none of the stuff at Bud's was super, super crazy hard, especially when you're fresh, but it's when you're getting that grind, man, day after day after mm. day. And, and then mm. if you're on the mm. goon squad, like you and I were, and you hear that diesel engine roaring behind you and they're on the megaphone and you know what's coming, you know? So everybody, everybody down, I got a video running around where I told a kid you're running a seven minute mile that he was trash. Right. And everybody's like, well, no, you only got to run eight minute miles to graduate. Yeah. I'm like, look, man, first of all, the runs are on Thursday. You got beat, you got beat to death for 14 hours, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then your runs on Thursday morning. Okay. Second of all, depending on the beach conditions, you may run four miles, you may run 4.2 miles, you may run 4.3 miles with wet boots on because there's no beach to run on. You may have to run 90% of in the soft sand. So it's oh. not just it's not just a, a four mile run when you woke up and you fresh. Yeah, right? that's soft sand, brothers. You know, that's uh and it's never else. the first thing of the day. The run is never the first thing no, of the day. Nope, nope. And you're doing like thousands of push-ups every day. Uh you're yep. doing yeah, it's it's no joke. I remember like what Dan was talking about, you know, that that brutal <laughs> doc that I remember my forearms killing me. I, I remember going down to the the local uh supplement shop right there in Coronado and getting glucosamine, asking the lady there, I got tendonitis in my elbow from, you know, doing all this. I, I, it's we're just starting. And she's like, here. So I started taking that every night. I bought some Cytomax. I started hustling. Oh, yeah, that. Cytomax. Yes, I started sir. hustling that in my yes, in my uh dive, my little dive bag so I can yeah. mix it in my canteen, you know. And that helped out a lot having those little bit of things. Um, but uh it was good times, man. I loved it. Um but go ahead. So let's just no, no no, let's just walk through, let's walk through buzz. So you, you got to end doc. I mean, you were in my class, so you know, like you saw all them dudes quitting in doc. Like I, I tell people, man, we huh. had like 200 160, what was it, 168 we started with or more? We started we started class with in doc. With 178. Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. We had 178 people in the class total. We started in doc with like 200. Yeah. And then what shocked me was like the first day, like 15 people quit. And then the next day, 15 people quit. And then the next, I was like, what is going on? Like, <laughs> they couldn't handle the cold. Man. No, well, you remember <laughs> uh, in in doc, we started off with that 4,400 yard swim every day. Oh, we went, remember we went over to the oh, pool, yeah. it was freezing, yeah. we had fins on, and we swam 4,400 every day. And my, and I, oh, I remember that. And I remember people were quitting, like, I can't do this. And I'm thinking to myself, bro, what, this is SEAL training, my guy, like we in a swimming pool. And then the other thing that always got <laughs> me was everybody quitting in the morning. Like yeah. the morning was hard, but I'd be like, why are we quitting? Why yeah. is everybody quitting in the morning? Why didn't you quit last night? And get a good night's sleep, you know what yep. I'm saying? Like, yep. and I just, you know, I just, you know, how I was. You no, know, I, I set my alarm. I got up 30 seconds. That's how long I had to shave. I would grab all my clothes, get dressed in formation, slide down. The, I slide down the light pole from the from the top of 618. Slide down the light pole, get dressed in formation while all y'all were, you know, get, all the officers were getting ready to go, and then we would go do Sir Os report. And and I think it was Gonzo. Gonzo in the beginning was with us. I forget who the LPO was at the very beginning, but like y'all, we'd meet y'all down for PT at five o'clock, you know. And it was yep. like, man, that but yeah. PT, boy. So how was so? Just how was your first week? Like how was? So, so yeah, my first week in doc was I, I loved it. I was still pumped up, like no, you know. Um, but I felt I was pumped up, but I I knew I was not. I made a mistake in not training harder when I was at a school. Like I said, if that, that was a big eye opener, like getting the boots and running in that deep sand and, 
and all of the stuff that you do when you're actually there is it's not the same man no matter how hard you no matter how hard you train buds is a is an animal so i'll just say i remember being in the in dock barracks and getting first time getting wet and sandy and you know uh you know getting cold and that didn't bother me but i i really wasn't i wasn't tripping off of anything man until until like literally the the goon being the goon squad in week four man but like getting getting through in doc was uh it wasn't bad you know there's so many guys quitting i was like man i can't believe all these dudes are quitting already Dude, is... they would quit and that's the thing man so someone asked me today about you know like i would have thought this the the seal training was this absolute bastion of teamwork and togetherness and i said nah man it's the exact opposite seal training itself is like the most stoic isolated event ever because you can't lean on nobody because everybody else is in the same place trying to carry their own weight trying to survive trying to survive and if you lean on somebody they you're gonna be gone bro like like if you need some help they're gonna be like you gone until later like second third phase we helping each other try to be successful right but like in the early part the other thing that got me man do you, you remember that uh oh you didn't so you remember that big six eight officer that we had from Alaska? The huge. He had big six pack abs. He was massive. He was like he, six six. He, he was. Did he? he was in. He he made all the way to Hell Week with us. He was oh, really? huge, and and I just remember, man, like there was him and then Shay, and I was just like, man, and I just remember when they quit in Hell Week, I was like, oh my god, that dude quit. I was like, oh, my God. And they quit right in front of me, man. Like, he was like, I want to be free like the dolphins. And he started crying. And he just, like, instructor put his arm around and said, you all right, man. And he was like, I just want to be free. I just want to be free like the dolphins. And then I was like, oh, shit, you know. And it, it just, it, like, that's the part that a lot of people don't understand. That's why I preach so much, train by yourself, right? Don't rely on nobody. Like, nope. like because when, when it's dark and you in a decon shower, like I was talking to James about the decon shower. And, oh, man. Dude, I told him, like, quit then. You know, like, he's like, man, I'm fucking cold. Yeah, he looked at me. And, James. and I said, damn, James. Like, I, I feel bad because, like, I didn't understand. I hadn't figured out yet that I was a an officer. I was a football player. I was a wrestler. And there was a lot of people looking at me to kind of set the example and so, like, and, and you know me, like, when I was in Buzz, I just had my head down. I tried to be as hard as I could because I always thought I was failing, right? Like, I was like, I remember I asked Ryan Engel one time, I said, Ryan, man, do I look awful out there in PT? He said, Jake, no, you, you're, you're killing it. Nah, you're man. murdering it. And I'd nah. be like, I'd be like, no, man, like, I feel so bad up there because I was always in the front and I could never see nothing, you know? Like, I was always in the front by myself as the OIC, but it was just was crazy, man. So like that whole stoic nature of it by yourself, like I think I think that's important because really what we're talking about here, Jeremy, is the mental game of SEAL training. And we are talking about the mental, the mental game that I try to explain to people, and everybody thinks I'm lying. Everybody oh always says, Oh, if you just don't quit, you'll make it. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. No, I, no. no partner. No, 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 no. no. You're talking about the psychological warfare and it is no joke. I mean, the, the fire crew, uh, working on the fire crew helped me out with that, you know, getting dogged on by the other guys and all of that and messed with them that, that, you know, you just got to dig deep into your own, um, your own soul. It, it really brings out what you're really made of, you know, and, uh, with Indoc man, I remember all those guys quitting and I was like, man, well, I'm that much farther than those guys. They're already gone. And it's really not even that bad yet, you know, and it's a big head game. It is. And, you know, I remember doing those fins and just look, man, seals. I'm sure you've told the guys this before, but the same call of duty, the same battlefield, the ain't no video game. You ain't going to respawn. There's a very real chance that in training you can get dead or extremely injured to where you're you're just done and if you're not willing to risk all of that 
then you're in the wrong place. And honestly, if you, if you can't go there and you were talking about our in dock training that those fins, I, I never swam with fins. So that's a good thing. You're having these guys prepare for that. I never and, fin. And and now they got rocket fins. They got nice fins that are wide toe boxes. Oh. Back then they were them little duck feet fins yep. that had narrow toe box. Like I was in there trying to carve out a little bit more space for my foot because yep. my foot was like this in the in the fin. Like it was yeah. just crunched up in there. Yeah. So what happened with me on on those conditioning swims with the fins? Uh you know, you know how it is, man. You don't want to be singled out by those instructors. So you're putting out 110% first time every time like no matter what's going on if you're in pain you just suck it up and keep going yeah well i don't remember what week it was in dock or whatever but i remember swimming and all of a sudden <clears throat> something popped in my foot and one of the small bones yep and it, yep. and i know i know it was a stress fracture i'm, I'm telling you I, I just it hurts so bad and i i just i knew that oh man this is no good i'm gonna have to just tough it up and i just kept swimming with one leg and stroking with my arms and harder and i just switched sides when i got tired because yep. you know and uh it, my foot hurt maybe for like two and a half three weeks all the way into phase in the phase one and i just would run on it you just what are you gonna do if you go to medical you're gonna get rolled or they're gonna drop you or who knows in doc man i remember in doc you go to medical man it was a black hole no yeah. one ever see you again yeah and it's so so I, I didn't bother with that i had two of my toenails turn black and fall off from those crap those fins and you know i mean that alone those three things you know how much pain that causes can you imagine that if you can't imagine that if you've never been in any kind of job or any kind of thing to where you've had blisters or you've been on a long hike and you just got to push through that pain and deal with it and try to attend to it as best you can and you're talking about we won't even get into the so the sand in your socks and and the the skin getting ground off and well you know how it is but anyway, um, that was in doc and there's in so doc quitting. In we, we, that we started, we, we, we were almost at a hundred people when we started, yeah. we lost like 65, 70 people in Indoc. I know. Yeah. I know by week four on the day that I, I quit, I, I was, I know we were down to like 38 people. Yeah. Yeah. Was, okay. yeah, yeah. And we, we, you know, Dan rehashed some of them crazy deals that were going on because i wouldn't you know i wasn't taking no beatings like i was trying to break instructors at buds you know um let's talk about the event that, that kind of triggered you to have some second guessing because i don't like what were you running what were your run times man my fastest mile uh at, not at buds but when i was training before uh, my fastest mile was 615 okay what was your what was your fastest four mile at buds my fat, I, I honestly, man, it was so long ago. You don't remember, Jake. Yeah. I don't remember. I, were you, was, were you, meet, were you, were you like well below the 32 or were you in the back with the 32? Um, all I know is on the, I passed the first four mile conditioning run. Okay. No, within the time limit, maybe by like two minutes, wasn't by much. Um, two minutes is a lot, brother. I passed it by like, I don't know, 10 seconds. Maybe a minute. I don't even remember. Was it, it was like 38 minutes to make that run? 32, 32 minutes, four mile. Yeah, I, I know I barely passed it. And I, I took everything I had because, well, you, you know, when you're running fresh, no big deal. But after you've done a grinder PT and you've, you're dropping every for every infraction or just because the instructors just want to drop you and do 20 and do and 20 you've been cold and wet 20, and sandy you know and, took trips. You are, and you ran the breakfast you already yeah. come back you already ran four or five miles that day yeah it's just like who is it o'neill i saw on youtube uh it's talking about you know when you're in buds just going from evolution to evolution to evolution and to chow and back and forth you're running at least six miles a day six miles a day six brother miles it's a, a mile day. and a half round yeah. trip and then so, yeah and then if you aren't on, if you aren't on time, guess what? Can there ain't be. no chow. You go through there just so you don't get in trouble with the instructors. And I remember this many a times because I remember being hungry and needing energy and we didn't have time. I remember Murphy saying, Hey man, we ain't got time guys. We're running late. We got to get over here. And we ran through there 
as food's coming on the tray, we're just trying to swallow as much as we can set the tray down, walk right back out and it's off to the next evolution. Yeah. 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 So, so, uh, so let's talk about, you know, you got through first, you got through the first week, second week, you know, I tell everybody, I, I, I was amazed that people thought, you know, that first day they bring the machine guns out, the grenades, everything is coming out. And I remember people were quitting and crying and said, I can't do this for six months. Okay. I was like, <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, thought we've been here for like two and a half months now you see second phase running around in t-shirts all day like what are you talking about this ain't gonna last for six months and like i gotta quit man i'm like jesus it just was amazing to me right that like guys were quitting on day one man and 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 it didn't stop like it didn't stop like like every day cats was quitting man and i was like holy smokes man and they just you know and then you know, it, it got to people, but it just amazed me because I didn't think, and I'm sure you didn't think anything we were doing was that hard. No, I didn't. I, none, honestly, none of it, none of it was that hard. Like no, nothing we did was like I was like, oh my god, that was the most hardest thing I ever did. None of it was even close for me. I wrestled. You were on the fire line. Like a twenty hour, twenty nine hour day on the fire line was harder than any one day at Buds, and maybe as hard as Hell Week, right? Like. Cause you're moving and, and shaking that whole 29 hours. You're yeah, not, yeah. you ain't got no hour for lunch and an hour no, for dinner. No. Like, you're eating like, MREs, man. Yep. Just like in the military, you're eating MRE out there and you slam it down as fast as you can and get back up and go to work. <laughs> yep. uh, so let's but, talk about, let's talk about the event that kind of got you, man. Where, where were you at? So it wasn't just one event, you know, uh, I, like I said, Log PT, no big deal. As long as everybody's in your boat crew putting out, unless you get on old misery, I will say, old, especially old misery suck. if it they want to be and they have you rolling it in the water and everything else, getting it wet and soaked. Um, but uh, the regular logs, no big deal. The the boats, as long as everybody's putting out, no big deal. I, I loved the the surf passage in the boats. It, you know, it was I it was scary at times with the uh, El Nino <laughs> what we were going through. But it was it was a blast. I, that's so probably some of my favorite memories from Buds. Is I got a, I got an APB out on Murphy, but no one can find it. He's still in the Navy, apparently. Wow, really? Yeah, yeah, he's still in. So I got I got I asked the group, no one knew where he was at. I asked Tom Rhino, who they all thought would know where he was at, and he just said, "I think he's still in. I'll look for him." So yeah. So anyway, to get back at you know, not one it wasn't really just one thing. The the one thing that did mess with my mind, because I, you know, when we do in the pool comp, uh, doing the drown proofing and all that, I didn't really have a problem with, uh, you know, the, the drown proofing part of it, picking up the mask with your teeth and the, the swimming, the swimming 50 meters without touching the sides being all tied up. That's just one big mind game, man. You just got to yeah. stay relaxed. It's all, it's all up here, guys. Just you, it's in your head. Everything is in your head. You are your biggest enemy. It's you. It's you. You got to focus on staying just committed to what you're there for and not let the mind take over everything else. And, uh, you know, man, we'll get to the story in, in the pool was, um, drown proofing time and we were doing the 50 meter and uh they had all of us lined up in the boat cruise and this was phase one i don't remember which week i mean this 23 years ago so but uh one guy in my boat crew um he was in front of me he was next to do the 50 meter and he went down cross came back and uh as i saw him swimming back up to the side of the pool he just drowned man and they had to do a safety timeout pulled him out got the defibrillator out uh they had a sitting nut to butt turned around you know how it goes when that happens but you can't help but look because you're like holy you know yeah yeah bro man, i'm telling you man this is real it's real and i try to explain to people you you can claim to want that smoke but when you see that real fire and you yeah. see somebody getting cpr someone tried to argue with me that that 15 people didn't get cpr in pool in pool comp and i was like oh yes they did Oh, Look, man, oh, yes, they did. I, I don't know, man. I think my brain tried to block some of that out over the years. But uh, 
that messes with you. I remember seeing his eyes roll back in his head as he was coming up to the surface. And when they pulled him out, I was just like, oh, you know, I don't want to cuss yeah, or anything. Yeah. But yeah, at, you, in those days, I did. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, like when I saw that happen, I was like, man, I got to do this next. I'm next up. And uh, it, and I, I've done 50 meter underwater swim before, you know, um, like I said, everything is not that hard at buds guys. It's when you're not fresh or when something's going on in your mind, it's gonna, it's gonna get you. You just saw dude get hit with a defib. When you see somebody die right in front of you, uh, drown on the pool deck, I don't know if he actually got defibbed, but they had that bad boy there. And I, they kept telling us to turn around and not to look. And I know he went out of there with the medics. You, you know, one of the things that I tell people that I thought that, that to me was like, oh, my God. So I always went first. Right. Like by that point in training, I oh, like the third week. So the third week of training, I took over as the OIC. I don't think I was the OIC yet. So I didn't go first on everything. But I remember being shocked at how they treated the cold, dead body. Like they they, they hooked them under their armpit. And they just threw them on the pool deck. They didn't like nurse them on the pool deck. They hooked them under their armpits and they just heaved them onto the pool deck and they fell like dead weight, like a piece of meat just flopped down on the pool deck. And I was like, oh my God. And you know, like, shoot, uh, drown proofing, we saw it, saw it in 50 meter underwater. Yep. Um, you know, when we got the pool comp, like, like, I remember I surfaced and they said Zwig pass and I looked to my right and they were screaming code blue and whoever it was was blue. I'm talking about deep blood. He had no blood and I was like, oh my God. And it got him to the side and you know, there's all the safety guys, all the Buzz classmates that are, are the safety dude. They pulling the rig off and they got him on the pool deck and, I, and you know, you sitting over there like, and I passed. So then once I passed, I was working. So I didn't ever have to look away, right? Like I was going back and forth and I'm like, man, like there was a couple of times there was three people on the pool that getting work done to them, you know? So, and I don't know, I guess I just, I'm not going to say it didn't affect me. I just knew how serious the game was. Yeah. Right. And, and, yeah. and, and, and it, it, for me, it wasn't so much, that dang, that dude almost died, or that, you know, like the class behind us, like I was talking to Dan about, Dan went into 218, 218 had two people die in first phase, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, I, I'm like, yeah, man, I mean, I saw people, like, coming out of the water dead, having to get CPR, like, I saw it, and and it just, you know, like, I, I my big deal was like, man, I need to be more prepared. The more that's prepared I it. am, then the better I can do, the less I got to worry about it. And I, I was blessed. I could hold my breath for 345, but I had been holding my breath for two years to get ready to go to Bud's because I thought that that was something you really needed to have. I didn't know nothing. I didn't have no clue what I was getting into. I just thought you needed to hold your breath. Like, man, you're going to need to be able to hold your breath forever. I'm going to start holding my breath all the time, you know? And But yeah, yeah man, that, that does help. Go ahead. That does help. I, I used to practice holding my breath too, but yeah, it's, it gets crazy. I mean, you know, once you make it through it though, it's, it's not a, it's not a big deal, you know, and you just got to understand you're being trained for combat. And like you said, it's kindergarten. Every single thing those, the teams do when they go out there is, is possible. Someone ain't coming back. And, yeah. uh, you know, um, you, you, you need to make a gut check before you even bother. If you're not willing to risk your life or get not willing to die, gravely, don't show up or gravely injured. Don't show up. I mean, you're risking your life every time you get on that. old course, every time you get in the boat, remember the guy who got his back broken. I All remember, drunk. I All remember drunk. that, that would mess with my head too. Every time I'd see him walking through the compound with that big with plastic, that big, that big plastic brace. Oh. Now, I, I tell like, people oh, that was man. one of the craziest things I've ever seen in my life going out. That's when the, one of the first days they were talking about, we had to try to make it through the 14 foot plungers and the plunger landed right in the boat and it folded the boat up and it shot him 75 yards in the air and he lawn darted into the big berm, like right into the side. And the sand was all the way up to his shoulders. And I said, oh, my God, he's dead. <laughs> and I remember they had they, they they carried him away. 
And then, like, two days later, he came back. And he was in the full body brace. Like, maybe a week later, he came back. And they're like, he broke his whole back, but he's going to be okay. Yeah, he's and one he of those. He ended up graduating. He ended up graduating. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that, man. I, I didn't get to see it. I didn't see it. Between I us saw little... it right in front of me. Because <laughs> he was up there with you guys. guys. We were Remember, they had there was a cleanup crew for the yard sales, right? Like I, so half of the boats would go and it was all by size. So you guys were in the big people. So he was in the big people boats and then all the Smurf crews were at the other end. So I was in the Smurf crew. So we were picking up all the paddles and getting boats and all that stuff. Cause there, no one got out. No one, no, no one even got close. But then after that, we didn't do surf passes anymore. Right. Like, like the waves were too big. If the waves were over like eight feet, we didn't do surf passes no more, which, you know, and that's also like right out there. We saw, I think it was Aisham who got his life jacket sucked off of him. Yep, I remember that. Right, because all the that. parachute riggers, they took all of you guys. You had to go sh- go so uh, rig for sea straps yep. on every. Yep. You you were one of those dudes that was gone yep. for like three days. Yep, yep. You know, yeah. they had to put leg straps. Not I see the vest they got now, and I was like, oh, those are nice. The uh, life jackets they use now. I haven't I haven't seen a new. Yeah, K-Pos. But, yeah, but um. Yeah, man, it's things like that that you see while you're there training. You're going to see it. You're going to see people falling off the slide. I don't know, man, but when we were there, the slide for life was hard packed. You know, yeah, yeah. Now, now the army made them like so from the level below, there's like a slope berm, a slope sand pile that goes all the way down to the bottom. But absolutely. But that's why they called it slide for life because I'll tell you, by the time people think, oh, that's not that bad, it's only 25 feet. But man, by the time you do the rest of that, the, the weaver, and the cargo net, I, I heard somebody fell off of that before, too. Shoot. Uh, uh, was it our class that I saw the guy fall f- from I, the top? I could have swore somebody from our so, class. So you remember, do you remember how they used to do hand to feet? Like they would flip down the backside of the cargo net? Yeah. And I would be like, what planet are you guys on? Like, what are you doing? Like, Because I was like, at the top, I would take my time, ease over the top, get a good handhold, bring my legs over. And then I would go down at a reasonable pace under control. Yeah. And I remember the dudes was flipping over the top and, and the, it's 60 feet, bro. And yeah. he, he, he touched like three times and bam was done. He was out of training. Yeah. You know, and we had to do it in our class. I talked to Dan and I know you just heard this one had to do it in our class fell off three times, man. Up and I remember for life. Yeah. Slide for life fell off the, but not, not from the middle. I'm talking about two hand holes in. Ah. Was that the, the little Asian guy we had? Uh, in uh, it was it was a tall, skinny dude. It was oh, like okay. A, he was like probably 5'11", like 145. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that thing that you got to remember when you're out there and you're doing thousands of push-ups, you're getting wet, getting sandy, you're doing log PT, you know, rope climbs, all these different things. Grip strength is huge. Yep. Uh, by the time you get to that slide for life, your adrenaline is going because I mean, if you fall, you're, <laughs> you're going to get messed up. And I never had any problem with that, but it was one of those weeks in first phase. I don't remember which week uh, I never fell off of it until that one time. And because I was so my, my grip strength was just burnt that day for whatever reason, I got down all the way till I was about, I think maybe 15. When you started going back up that last 10 feet where you start going back up the rope. Yeah, where you get down to the bottom, and then uh, if you're a big dude like me, everything flattens out. Yeah, it goes up. Move. Yeah, it goes up. Yeah, and I was just like, man, why can't we go down this thing face first? And they're like, oh, you can't do that till second or third phase. And I'm like, this this upside down crap is. I hated it, man. I was like, I could do this no problem. Just let me go down face first, but they wouldn't allow it. How how about this? When you get to the SEAL teams, you come out of buds. You think you got great grip strength. You go to the water O course and it takes you like probably six times. So you do the water O course like every other week. The first six times you come out, you're like this for like three days, just clawed up, man. You can't even move. They're like, Oh, you, you new guy, huh? Water O course. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why I tell it. Like, that's why I'd be saying the kindergarten class, you think, you think you're doing something and you get in that real world. You're like, Oh God, there's a yeah. lot more growing to do out here. I can't imagine. I mean, I can't imagine, but I mean, I, I, you know, now that I'm older and I've seen, so anyways, we'll get back to that thing. What, what got me, um, was just, uh, and I remember, man, it was, I think you were there. It was, uh, the 14 miler 
and we were running back on that road on the edge of the strand the devil the demo pit road yep running back on that road and i was falling behind and as usual i was always usually in the back with me and clint were back there with the truck yeah you missed and bruce and and uh you know the instructors in the truck you always hear that ford running and um I remember one of the medics, he's like, Miguel, you don't want to be back here, man. He's like, he's like, I'm a, I'm a big guy. Just like you, you got to push it out. And I'm like, man, I, I was like surprised he was being nice to me like that. Or he was telling me, you don't want to be back here in the goon squad. You don't want to be getting attention. So man, I started giving it everything I have to get ahead and try to catch the rest of the group. And I got maybe halfway halfway to them almost three quarters of the way almost caught up but it was still not enough to where they still threw me with the goon squad and then we did relays was that your first goon squad no no more okay yeah because i'm about to say i i I never i never didn't go on a goon squad on the run yeah no i i've made it through without getting on the goon squad on quite a few of the runs but that that one was i may have been my first i don't know it's all one big blur when it yeah, comes, yeah, absolutely. you know, but, absolutely. but I don't, re- I don't forget that, that goon squad, because, you know, this is another big thing that you recognize that. I know you take, yeah, that. yeah. Simba cord. I, dude, I'm yeah. going to tell you the best thing I ever had was a red, like a daily inhaler. Like my, I'm like, Oh my God, if I had a daily inhaler back then, like, Oh, <laughs> that's what I was, I was thinking. But anyway, so what got me on that run was, we had to do, you know, how they parked the truck and then they had all the goons like yeah, yeah, ra- yeah. race each other. And yeah, yeah, if, yeah, if you're yeah. like, if you're not the winner, you're, you have to keep doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Man. I swear, Jake, I thought I was going to die, man. I thought I was, I was my as like asthma, like I couldn't breathe, man. I finally, I just was like pushed myself so hard that I finally won. And there was still maybe six guys left. But when I got done, I, I, it took me forever to catch my breath. Like, and it was like wheezing and, yeah. and uh, you know, I thought I was going to pass out and go in the back of their truck to medical getting worked on, man. man. but that's how you got to do it. You got to be pushing yourself and people don't get it, man. You got to push yourself to, to death and uh, you may die. You don't know, but that's what they're looking for. Because when you, you know, I mean, not that I'm a seal or made it like you, but I know what they're, what I went in there for, you mean when you bullets start flying and the combat starts, you can't just curl up in a hole and, you know, stop whatever. Nope. Everybody's dependent on you. But anyways, uh, with the, um, that run, I, I made it off of that. And then I thought, okay, cool. I was in the goon squad, no big deal. And it may have been my first and only goon squad. Actually. I really don't remember for sure, to be honest, but I was like, cool. You know, I got out of that. No big deal. I thought I was cool. Hard day of training over nighttime came around. We were doing our thing, getting ready to head back to six eighteen. And the next thing I know it was either you or Murphy. Oh, one of the O's came up and they just started calling off names. Listen up. If I hear your name. And I was like, Oh no. I mean, mm. the words were much worse than that, obviously. But, um, we ended up going to the grinder and getting smoked. Smoked. I mean, smoked. And you know, we're, our class would end at what, like six o'clock at night already. Yeah, we got is. done. We got done normally about six thirty because I go to Chow. We got to Chow about five fifteen. I wouldn't rush nobody. We'd be in there until six fifteen. We'd make the ten minute jog back. We get back about six thirty. We only had a five minute meeting. If we ever met, we was only five minutes. And then we, we cut everybody loose. And I was the only officer because I, I I lived in the, in 618. Like every, all the other officers had apartments and other that I lived in. I was like, I, I was like you, I'm staying in this hole. I'm going to live in 618. So, you know, like we were done by 630 normally. But I'm going to tell you, I agree with you, man. Them When they would get you extra at night. Oh, because the next day it wasn't that it wasn't that time. It was trying to function the next day. Yeah. And I've been I, I, I'm pretty sure I was gooned. I had a smoke session, a couple of them before this one, but this one was the one that broke the straw on the camel's back. Like it, it was no joke. It was like six hours straight and we were doing going and getting wet and just, you know, on the grinder, eight count bodybuilders, push-ups, this, that, like, 
and the instructors are playing mind games. You know, you're you're dead tired. You're freezing cold. And I mean, that was cold. I was. Oh yeah, it was cold. Now, let Cats me tell you, it was cold. It snowed. Yeah. Someone, it was cold. I think Dan said it snowed. Yeah. You know, I'm like, oh yeah, it was chilly. Google it. 19, yeah. 1998, January, San Diego, 37 degrees. It was cold, man. And I remember, I remember that night, you know, the instructors that were are pounding us to death. Uh, they were like messing with us. They ordered dominoes and they're like sitting there and like, anybody wants to quit right now, just come grab a slice. You come know? get a slice, it's bro. They playing the mind games. Playing those mind games. And I didn't care about any of that. I'm like, you know, I, I knew it was up, but um, that was like the beat down that really got me, man. That was Wednesday. Uh, see, no, it's Thursday night. Thurs Thursday night was thursday night that was my last day on week four and uh and just like you've been telling all these guys i see on your videos man what gets you is that getting out of bed in the morning you get comfortable i'm telling you right now it will it Mm. will snatch the life out of you yeah when that alarm goes off i remember the first day jeremy the first day i gave myself 10 minutes to get ready i said oh my god like I got shaved and it was like two minutes. I was like, oh my God. And I literally had eight minutes and I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. I, I, I can't do this. This is this is a deadly time. Like this, like you yeah. this is a very deadly is, time. Yeah. And that's when I sat there and messed around. I had a pager at the time. I messed around with the time on the pager to get my clock to go off to give me 30 seconds to shave and get out of the room. Yeah, man. And I'll tell you, I was, when I hear you talking about those techniques that you use, I was like, man, I wish Mr. Swig would have passed that down to all us, all us guys. Uh, those little things would have helped. But you don't, us, you don't think guys. about it, right? Because like, you're, yeah, you're considered well, surviving. I, 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 well, you know, like, I'm like, cause the other thing is like, like I thought I was weak, right? I'm like, oh shit, I can't, I can't get up and take 10 minutes. Like I never occurred to me like shit. The rest of the class is having the same problem. They probably are terrified to get up, you know, like it never, it just didn't like it, it, yeah. it, it goes back to like, you're in your own head so much. Yeah. You're yep. not really seeing everybody around you. Right. Mm, like you're, yeah. you're not understanding. Now there was times when we knew, Hey man, so-and-so needs some help or Hey, we need to make sure we take care of so-and-so. But if it wasn't something big, like getting up in the morning, Never occurred to me until I started sending people to SEAL training and they were like, man, Jake, this getting up stuff. is." So I'm like, oh, here's the trick, right? Here's the trick to getting up in the morning and being successful at SEAL training. Yeah. And you're in your, you know, not to mention the fact that you, your thermostat's all messed up in your body and you wake up in soaking wet sheets every day and uh, yeah. you're, you're going to bed shivering sometimes, like most of the time you're just you're sleeping but you're not really sleeping and i don't even know how to describe that to anybody but you know like i said those guys i remember they're saying this goon squad stuff's gonna i remember one of the it was that medic who was being nice to me on that 14 mile run he's like you don't want to be here but he's like he said this is gonna give you an advantage when hell week gets here because you you're gonna be uh you're gonna be more prepared for what's coming And I was just, and that got that, even though I thought that, oh, he's being nice to me, that little thing he was saying actually got to me like, oh, dude, you know, this guy's, yeah, so. So so here's the weather so people can understand. I got to find the temperature. Heavy rain, heavy, this is January 10th when we started first wave, phase. Heavy rain, light rain, heavy rain. Uh, Fog and mist on January 14th, January 15th, light rain. 16th rains uh the weekend it drizzled monday rain light rain tuesday light rain (laughs) friday fog like it just goes on and on right like all the way to january january 29th thursday uh drizzle drizzle monday drizzle tuesday drizzle wednesday drizzle thursday heavy rain saturday light rain right and and cats are like oh man it was that bad i'm like Look, bro, when they gave us coats in Hell Week, I don't know what I thought I was doing, but when I got a coat and a hat in Hell Week, I said, well, damn, it must be cold out here. Yeah. Because I don't know what's going on, but they're going to give us a hat and a coat. Hey, right? when you're looking at 
everybody in your boat crew and everybody's got blue lips, you know it ain't no joke. When Brant Feldman came up to me at the mud pits and was like, I have never been this cold in my life. I, I'm going to die. <laughs> I'm like, shit. <laughs> All right, let's start doing some push-ups, folks. Because the instructor's like, what are you doing? So look, man, we, we cold. We got to work out. That's the only thing I know to affect this cold. Like, we can't. Like, I just had one of the toughest dudes in my class come up to me and say, I'm cold. Like, we're going to have to start working out, you know? But, and as I'm trying to find the February temperature, I just got, I got the, it rained most of February. But I haven't ever, like, I've never said, like, hey, man, this is what it was. I was trying to find the temperatures. Um, let me see if I can find the historical temperatures. Because, like, you know, it's just funny, man. Everybody wants to talk about how their stuff was extra hard. And, you know, I didn't have no frame of reference. I had no frame of reference. I didn't know what was hard. I didn't know what was not hard. It's all hard. It's all hard. It's all right? hard. And there's no easy day in buds. And if you're going to go there thinking that there's going to be a time where it's easy, you're sadly mistaken. If you can't handle going through all the stuff that we're talking about, eh, stay home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So this is saying, I'm trying to see, this is saying the low temp was 61, but I know that's not the case. I know, absolutely no. And it might've been 37 with wind chill. Um, so here's the, here's the daily observations. 50, 55 was the low. I got to try to find it by day. Um, I need to look that up. I'll look that up and put a chart in this video for all these goons to see like what the temperature was in January and February and all the rain and, you know, because I remember thinking, man, you know, that it never rains in Southern California. I'm like, damn, it's, I remember we going to PT every morning. It was wet already, like pouring out rain. I'm like, yeah, man, it, it sure it is was, raining a lot. It was, it was crazy. Yeah, I remember. And, uh, you know, to get back to that night, though, when, when I made my decision that I had enough, um, yeah. we didn't even talk about the elephant run and, and the boats and how my neck popped and the pain was out of yeah, yeah the bad you had a bad deal with the neck yep. and the elephant run and why don't you talk about is... it go ahead go tell tell because i want well, i want these cats to understand 14 miles with the boat on your head i want people to understand what what you prepared what that preparation looked like and it still didn't equal success that's right and so like talk about the talk about the the elephant run that you went through where your neck popped well well we were uh we were on the beach and before the run and i don't remember that we something we didn't do right we got dropped we're doing push-ups you know you're always doing push-ups it's like no big thing that's like buds so but uh the and it might just have been maniac man right because maniac remember you remember maniac man running in the boats remember the elephant boats were all touching and he was running across the boats oh. I, i'll put money i'll put money that's probably what it was because yeah, there was there was a whole bunch of boats that fell down when he ran across the top of the boats. Yeah, yeah, maybe that. Probably, I think. Yeah, I remember we did fall down at one point. But I, all I know, man, is they they shoveled like probably a hundred something pounds worth of wet sand in the in the boat. Also, before the run started, and um, you know, it all went to the front because that's just what it does. And I was in the front. And the, the boat was bouncing on my head and I was holding it up for as long as I can, but 14 miles, man, it's a long time to try to hold up all that weight off of your head and you're running. And, um, <clears throat> it, it came down and I just heard a loud <clears throat> and screaming out in pain and, and, uh, the instructors from the truck saw it and heard it and they, they, um, they called Murphy and told him, Hey man, you got to rotate your guys out. Your, your dudes in the front are getting, you know, crunched or whatever. And, uh, I mean, not that it did any good. It was too late. The damage was done, Yeah. but I got rotated to the back and it was like a huge relief, but I still had the, the boat on my head when we finished all that. But I mean, to this day, man, that's just something cats don't think about. If you're not willing to take damage like that, don't go to buds. And let me tell you, I'm 70% service connected from that and multiple other things. Um, you know, I got ridiculopathy in my cervical spine from that. Yep. My grip strength will never be the same because of the nerves being affected by all that. 
So, you know, you got to be willing to sacrifice, man. Even if you don't make it, you're sacrificing for your cut. You're sacrificing. Even if you don't make it, you're sacrificing. Yep. You're paying a uh, toll. You're paying a toll. And you also got the emotional toll, right? Like this is, is, we're going to call this our psychological evaluation of SEAL training. You know, I tell people, man, like I got, I got a couple guys that they made it and they are crushed. Yeah. And I'm trying to tell them life is going to be okay, man. Like, yeah. you know, I got a great dude that didn't make it, was crushed. And now he's flying planes and he's back, right? I'm like, come on, man, we flying planes. Like, yeah. you weren't cut out to do that job over there. That's okay. Everybody ain't made to be a Navy SEAL. That's you know, right. but shoot, that psychological pain of failure is is epic out there. Oh, you it know? hurts, man. There's days that. It's still like before doing this video, I didn't sleep till like midnight and my bedtime is I'm an old dude now. It was like normally 10, 1030 because I'm in college right now. Yeah. Working on that degree. But, um, you know, uh, I was up reliving all this stuff, you know, the good and the bad of it and couldn't go to sleep for like the last three nights. But, you know, that's no big deal because, you know, it's I've real. Through- yeah, I mean, I've been through therapy. I went through uh, PTSD therapy with the VA hospital, you know, did did the whole prolonged exposure therapy and all that stuff. And yeah. uh, it is definitely, it's absolutely real, man. And, you know, it's just something that you don't think about when you're a candidate. And the one thing I will recommend is whether you make it or you don't, man, go to medical and get stuff documented so you have an easier time, you know. Whenever you get hurt in the military, a good idea, you know, there's nothing wrong with getting yourself taken care of, especially if you're, even if you're a team guy, I mean, you're not going to, you're going to regret it if you don't and you get older and you're, you're in pain all day, night, all, all day. day. You can't sleep because your shoulders sleep. won't let you sleep. You can't sleep because you're in so much pain and you don't want to take drugs because you don't want to destroy your liver or your kidneys. So, you know, um, yeah, I just recommend, you know, uh, don't hesitate to get to get that taken care of. Because, I mean, if you don't get it taken care of, somebody might die if you're actually in the teams. And, well, you know, when you get out, you're going to want to be compensated for <laughs> all of that stuff. Absolutely. So, you know, um, go ahead, Jake. No, you're good, brother. You just had a lot of mental stuff going on. You saw somebody, you know, get pulled out of the yeah. pool unconscious. Need CPR, you know. Yeah. And now, so I, now you you get your head broke, neck broke under the boat. And, mm-hmm. You know, you done went from a hard ass firefighting dude to now you're like, you know what? I don't think I want this fire. Yeah, yeah, man. And uh, uh, you know, all those things when you're cold, wet, and miserable. Okay. And I didn't have any problems with the surf torture or any of that. I didn't care about being cold. That's like whatever. It is what it is. But when you get that long, like I did, and that's, that's a taste of hell week, just a tiny smidgen of what hell week is, is like, you know, that six hours that I spent and everybody else in the class is sleeping, (laughs) you know, I got back and you think, oh, so I only got beat down to like midnight, 1230. Right. But you think, oh, well, it's no big deal. You still get back and have four hours of sleep because, but you ain't, you can't sleep. I, you know, when I got out of that smoke session, I ran back to the, the barracks, still freezing cold, blue, li, you know, blue lips, all that, you know how it is. And I got there and I, what did I do? I made a, a hot bath, man. And I sat in that bath for like an hour and a half, just shaking, just mm. not, uncontrollably, mm. uncontrollably shaking, even mm. in the hot, even in the hot water. And it took me when I got out because I was like, man, I'm still shaking, but I need to sleep. So I got out of the bathtub. I got out of the bathtub, still shaking. I was like, I don't have time for this. And I got in the rack and I'm not even kidding. You know, when you're that exhausted, it seems like you just shut your eyes and all of a sudden the alarm clock is going off. My, my roommate's getting out of bed and you know, he's not even in my boat crew. I wish he was my swim buddy or at least in my boat crew. So he can say, Hey mother, get out of bed, you know, but I barely even knew that guy. Um, because he was in a different boat crew. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, you know, um, there ain't nobody there. Then this is what we're talking about. When that darkness surrounds you at that time, man, all those things 
all those things were starting to go like, you know, the, the guy I saw drowned in the swimming pool, like, you know, being hurt, all these different injuries that I'm still dealing with in my mind, my foot pain, my toe, pain, you know, from, yep. the bro- you know, yep. stress fracture in my foot, the, the, the neck pain, the back pain, everything, man. It's so a hundred percent. Like, I mean, you can't escape it. So you got to learn how to compartmentalize and deal with it. And, um, it just came to a, a, a dark head, man. And whereas I was just like in the bed and it, I was woke up and my sheets were wet and I was like in that comfort zone. And I, that's the worst place to be at buds is in that comfort zone because getting out of that comfort zone is so, 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 so hard. Getting out of bed is the hardest part every day. It is. I am not kidding you. That is the hardest part, man. Yeah. And, and, uh, I just said, you know what? I'm done. I'm not getting out of bed. And I, and, uh, I remember my roommate, he did try to talk me, Hey man, get up, get up. Yeah. We got a mustard. And it's like, I was like, man, screw it. I ain't going. Just tell him I ain't going. And, uh, it was hard, man. And when I, when I, when I woke up a couple hours later, y'all were already, I don't know what evolution it was that was scheduled for that day, but I th- I'm pretty sure the slide for life was, was there. And after that smoke session, I was like, how the hell am I going to do that obstacle course? I was thinking all of this stuff is running through my head. How am I going to do that? You know, and you just can't be there. You can't start thinking about that stuff because you know what? The one thing I do remember about buds is you, you can't let it spiral. Like you, you can't, you can't let your mind you need to focus at one step at a time one evolution at a time one evolution at a time and uh i just couldn't get myself out of that that dark hole that was beginning to get bigger and bigger and uh man it was hard because i put so much work and so much effort and it 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 got me man like i when i went to the grinder later that morning when the sun was out and i went over there and they, they were like, are you sure that's what you want to do? And I mean, at that point I could have just went and joined up with y'all, I think, and they would have been cool with it and whatever. Yeah. Especially after that smoke session, I, I realize now, but when you're 21 and you're younger and you don't know as much about my, the mind game stuff and all of that, like, um, you know, I just say, yeah, man, I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. I just, I just don't want to do it anymore. And I was like, literally like tears in my eyes because I, I knew how much I put out and gave just getting there and everything. And it was just, man. It, it was hard, man. And, you know, um, it doesn't, it didn't really hit until like later in X, X division. Um, when I told you about what happened out there with that ocean swim and, and stuff, I don't know. Now that story, man, that's a good one. So, so I'm gonna talk about kindergarten. Jeremy gonna talk about not even being in the SEAL teams, right? Not a Navy SEAL. Just got the opportunity to go out to third phase to the island and got sent on a little mission, and it turned it turned real, real quick. It so, got real, real quick. And mm-hmm. let me tell you, I thank God for the tra- the the bit of SEALs training that I already had under my belt because it saved me and my swim buddies, but. And I remember who it was, man, for all I know, it could have been James because we were in the same X division. Okay. But it was one of the dudes that was out there for 215's graduation. And Dev Group was there. They landed a C5. It was the first time in history a C5 Galaxy's ever been landed on the island. They unloaded two of the cigarette boats, those fast attack boats that, that you guys use. I think they're Mark fives. I don't know what they're called, but they look like mm. jet. They, they look have, like jet they boats. They have cigarette boats. Cigarette boats. They have cigarette they were boats. Cigarette boats. Well, yeah. anyways, they, they unloaded those from the plane and they had them moored off of the, the beach where you do the, um, all the explosive training and stuff. Yeah. In the little um, cove right yeah, in front of the compound. Yeah. To a buoy. They had them tied up out there and the storm wrecked those. That's how bad the waves were out there. That's how bad the weather was at El Nino. People don't realize, man. <laughs> uh, they, I remember the instructors telling us, you guys, if you make it through this class, you're going to have some bragging rights because of the El Nino. Excuse me. But uh, anyways, we were out there. Dev group was there. The chief that was in charge of X division wanted to entertain dev group. And um, obviously the rest of the instructors get, treat them. 
So he gave us a little mission, me and this one other guy. I don't even remember his name. It was so long ago, but uh, he gave us his sweat, his uh, two of his um, uh, wetsuits and these, I never used one before, but it was a, like a sling spear. Like sling it, spear. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A sling yep. spear where you hook it and you just let it go. And it's got like those rock wrist rocket, like, yep. you know, Bungie, got the bungee cords. Or the, yeah. Like, surgical yeah. Tubing. <laughs> yeah. Surgical got, tubing. Did you have the three prongs? Three the prongs. Front? The three yep. prongs. So he sent us out there with, with those and uh, one of those little lifeguard buoys with a net on it and asked us to go bugging for them and get some, some lobsters. We call it bugging because they don't have claws over here on the West coast. So we drove out there. It's pitch black night, winter time, you know, no, no stars, no moonlight. Um, and we go out there at this spot where uh, the chief told us it was good for bugging. And we get in the water and we start swimming up, up the coast. And we're just looking in the rocks with the dive lights, getting the, getting lobsters. We got about, well, we filled that thing up pretty much. I'd say about 25 lobsters or more, 25, 30 of them. And <clears throat> we started swimming back the other direction, back to where we parked the rig, the truck. And, uh, we're swimming back and we were, we were only about maybe 50, maybe 50 yards off the, off the rocks. It was all rocky. There was no sand. It was all rocky. Yep. And uh, we're swimming along and all of a sudden we're side stroking, we're side stroking, just like we we're doing training, you know, on our ocean swims. And uh, all of a sudden uh, we, I stopped swimming and he stopped swimming. I'm like, man look how far we're out we got caught in a riptide and next thing you know we're like a mile I, i'm not kidding you it had to have been at least a mile offshore i mean it just pulled us out so fast and the next thing you know we tried kicking back to you know direct towards the island and i still felt the riptide pulling us out and we're kicking as hard as we can not making any progress so then we started swimming to the side and um we swam a couple hundred yards farther to get out of the riptide to get back to shore but you know it's just like you were saying in that video where there's no lifeguards there's no instructors out there in the teams it's kindergarten and you get out there it's all on you and that's why the training is so crazy and that at that moment it just dawned on me like man dude uh we'd be dead if we weren't even though we dropped out you know if we didn't have the training that we did have we're out here by ourselves. There aren't no instructors. They don't know where we're at exactly where we're at. And I mean, but we got in, we got in and got crushed on the rocks by the big waves and we made it in and made it back and got, got cut up a little bit on the rocks, you know, but it is what it is. No big deal. But <clears throat> you know, the reality hit me is like, if I would have just you know, I realized I messed up. I was like, now this is what I wanted to do. This kind of stuff right here. You yep. know, I, I realized, man, yep. I, I messed up, but it's too late. I already made my decision. And I, you know, now if I want to get back, I got to go out in the fleet and work for three years and then, you know, try to make it back. And um, if y'all don't know how it is, if you've never, it, once you get out of buds, man, getting back is no joke. It's, it's even harder mean, now. Yeah, Jeremy, so, it's almost yeah. impossible to get back there now because they're closing your groups now. So what will happen is if you get out and let's say you went to parachute rigger, mm -hmm. they may close your year group like they'll close the year group maybe a year afterwards. So you can't come back like your year group is closed, wow. you know, so, you know, and then don't go to a job that has a high training rate. Like I got a couple uh, linguists that are the cryptologists. They told them you ain't going nowhere until the end of your six years. Like if you want to go back after six years, you can reenlist for another six years and go back. But we're not going to let you go back to Buzz until you're done with your four years with us. Yeah, man. So like you know, after I got back though from all of that, after they sent me over there to North North Island, <clears throat> Coronado, I was still in Coronado and uh, working with the helicopter squadron that I was assigned to, and lucky enough my my petty officer in charge was really cool. He'd let me train like on my lunch. He'd let me go for four mile runs. I'd wake up before I'd even get to work and I'd be at the pool, the rescue swimmer pool there on base. And I'd be finning just like we used to do an in in-doc. just man, hours, like two hours, three hours. 
swimming <clears throat> and uh you know then i go to work and um i was pt and hard man to get back to buds and at one point i felt i felt like i was ready to go back but you know then i got deployed for six months over to the gulf and and then i did a uh, did two rim packs and then every time it's like one of these hurdles like you go out on that ship and then you can't train for buds on a ship nope. you just can't let me tell you i tried they're just doing pull-ups in the ship and <laughs> yep. you know just doing the best that i could but you know, I got out of shape that many times. And then by the time uh, I was about ready to finish up my enlistment, the the commander came up to me of my squadron. And he's like, he's like, Miguel, you, you know, you've done good. You, you've been served really good here. And, you know, you've been doing a really good job. He's like, I know you're coming up on your time. I can get you a, you know, 20, I think it was 20 or $30,000 enlistment bonus. And I can get you guaranteed orders back to spec war if you want to go. And at that time, I was like thinking in my head, man, I wish you would have told me this like six months ago, because I only had like maybe three months, maybe two or three months left. And I was like, that ain't enough time to be ready for buds. Yeah. You know, I was yeah. like, there's there's no way because there's just no way. And I was and like, you were older, mm -hmm. right? You're like 25, 26. I was I was 24 at that time, okay. but I wasn't worried about my age. I was like, for any, if anything, I knew that I had the more, even more mental grit and mental maturity that if I did go back there, I'd stand, I, I believe I would, I would believe I would have had a better chance, you know, just because I already been there once and I know what, what's coming and everything, yeah. but you know, yeah. I also didn't want to dedicate another four years of my life to the Navy. I wanted to have a family. And I was like, you know, I gave it my shot and I made my decision and it is what it is. And then, uh, you know, it, it was hard, man. I was, you know, people don't realize too, when that happens, the things you got to deal with you, like the whole buds duds thing is real. I happened to me, you know, the, the, they don't want you there. Cause you know, and then you're not happy there because you're, you're at this level and the rest of the fleet is down here. Yeah. Like as far as mentality goes and professionalism, when in buds, you're trained to do it the first time, every time, hundred percent, right. Give everything you got all the time and you get in the fleet and it's just a bunch of, I mean, there's some good people, but there's a lot of people that aren't, you know, they don't care. They're just there because some of them had no choice, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. that or jail or, or, you know, they just doing it for a paycheck and whatever, but it wasn't what I wanted, man. And um, so I, I decided he even, he said, I can get you swick or buds, whatever you want. And I was like, no, I'm, I'm done. I said, sir, I'm done. Thanks though. Thank you for the offer. But you know, I'm, I'm ready to own my own life again and do my own thing. And I want to have a family. And I just, I, I, a lot of disgruntledness going on. Cause at that time I was still doing, dealing with, I didn't even know it, but depression, PTSD symptoms, all that stuff, you know, people don't realize, man. The first six months I was there, I was like depressed all the time, bender yep. on, on alcohol. I was like cutting myself. Like I was so angry and so, you know, not happy about being where I was at. And I was mad at myself, you know, and uh, yeah, it just, it sucked. It sucked. And, you know, I probably could have went to the, the doctors and talked to them about it. But then I was like, man, I got. Navy college fund, 40 grand for college. I got the GI bill. I was like, I don't want to give all that up on a, you know, get out for a mental thing or whatever. So I just yeah. sucked it up and had to deal with all of that stuff on my own. There's a lot of baggage, my guy. A lot of like baggage. Germany, there's a lot of baggage. And I try, you know, I've had a couple guys go and I'm trying to explain to them, you know, cause I, I, I just say this, like at this point, I've been mentoring people through buds for 24 years. 2000 was my first kid. 2003, the first kid that failed, right? Like, so um, I've been doing this a long time and I tell everybody the same thing. If I'm telling you, I don't think you're ready and you don't need to go to buzz or you don't have the right mentality, there is a 99.9% .9 chance that you just not going to make it. Mm -hmm. And, and, and everybody's like, well, you can't say that you need to give everybody hope. And I'm like, look, man, there's some, there's some factors that show very clearly you know, like I sent one dude out there that I gave a 3% chance to graduate and he crushed it. And there's one and that one dude and I should have looked at his brother's performance 
because his brother murdered a job very similar. Okay, and they grew up in the same house. They grew up really tough, right? But other than that, like, like I'm trying to shield people, or I'm trying to help people not make the catastrophic decision to say, like, because I'm gonna tell you this, man. Right now, Jeremy, you got a guy out there selling the fact that you only need to run 20 miles a week to be successful at Buzz. No like, way. I'm like, what? <laughs> no way. Like 20 miles a week. Like, what you doing that in the first two days? <laughs> That's Monday yeah. and Tuesday. I'm like, no. like, what are you talking about? And, you know, and he's out there and he's super arrogant and he's talking trash and he had a post about this and I called him on it. He tried to get nasty with me and tell me, I don't know what I'm talking about. And I said, well, I said, I know this, but you're out there selling packages of hope. You're trying to sell hope to people. I don't sell hope. I sell success. Okay. I'm selling success. I'm not selling hope. I'm not out here peddling packages for money to live on, I'm selling, I'm selling success, right? And actually I'm giving success away. Here's the PDF. I done got the masterclass down to $79 now. It was $300, but it was, you know, I was, I had to, I got to pay for the website it's on. I got to pay for my video dude. I got to pay for some other stuff. Like that's the bare minimum. Now it's all coming down, right? Like yeah. we started to do well on YouTube and I'm able to bring it all down. Like it's $79 a month. You can watch every video in a month, take all your notes and be done with it. You know, and it's like, it's the same thing. Like, I'm not selling hope, I'm selling success. Yeah, and uh, you know what, Jake, man, I think it's great. I mean, I honestly, I was, I, when I see your program, I mean, I haven't seen the PDF, obviously, but when I see and hear about what you're doing, I'm just like, man, these kids need this. They have no clue. It's so, I think it's awesome as, as a SEAL that you're willing to go out of your way to help people succeed in, in, in everything, all so come, you know, like all special forces, because they're all the same. You know, I just like, don't want nobody to have it bad. Like I had it, Jeremy, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I don't want nobody, I don't want nobody to show up to buzz and be out of shape. Like I was like, I didn't know what I was getting into, man. Like I, uh, like, I, was if you right told me, with you. I, I didn't know any <laughs> of the standards. I didn't know you had to run a 32 minute, five mile or four mile. I didn't know that it decreased everything. I didn't know you had to swim an 85 minute two mile. I didn't know none of that stuff. Right. I remember yeah. Ryan angle pulling me aside when I first got there saying, Jake, you're going to need to run at night. Here's the plan you're going to do, which is the speed tree Monday, Wednesday, Friday night, you're going to have to get in shape. And if I would have had to do it again, I would have ran it on the IB trail on the cement on IB. So I could have really gotten fast. I was running in the sand. I got in shape, but I didn't get fast. Right. And that was the one thing, right? Like, but now, I mean, none of it's hard. Cause I tell you, you know, like I got a couple of team guys hitting me up saying I'm giving them the cheat code. Right. And I'm like, first of all, I'm not giving them no codes. I'm simply telling them how to be prepared to be successful. And I'm teaching them how to learn a skill quickly because there's a lot of skills you got to learn in buds that you're going to get taught on Monday and then on Thursday, you testing them. Yeah, man. And you know what? That's not a cheat code because I don't care. I don't care how even, hey, man, I hate to say this is nothing against your your program or whatever. But, man, if you, if you can't keep it up here, it's all useless anyways. You can be the most awesome athlete and the champion of this and that. And I, we saw guys that were like triathlon, super shredded, like perfect shape versus me with a little bit of a pudge going on and and they were gone before first phase even started oh. so it's really it's here it's here it's here yep. you know if you if you you want to go to spec special forces i don't care what it is you got to have that grit and mentality before you even get there yep. and whether it's developing it through some hardcore physical labor or putting yourself through college you know like i don't regret doing doing buds it's made me the man who I am today. I, I'm going to be the first person in my family to get a college degree. Mm. You know, I already have my, mm. my, my AA's credits down and I take all the, everything I learned from buds, do it the first time, every time put out a hundred percent and I apply it. Yeah. I went through a hard, dark time. You know, I was contemplating suicide during those days and all kinds of stuff. And even it comes back to haunt you, you know, um, even after I succeeded and got past that for a little bit, the PTSD stuff is always still there, even though I didn't yeah. know it. 
Yep. I pushed myself through EMT school, became a paramedic, was going for the city fire departments, worked as a, as an ambulance paramedic for eight years. And then the PTSD from all the stuff I went through in buds, plus all the streets of South in Sacramento, all the stuff mm-hmm. you see. And it just, bam, man, got me to where I was like, yeah, I can't do this anymore. I, yeah. I you know, the sleep deprivation. Plus I was, I was working 256 hours a month on the box on the ambulance. Mm. Plus, mm. plus, and if I didn't go through buds, I don't think I could have done it, but you know, I, plus I was going to school on my days off working 24 hour shifts, three 24 hours a week. And then I was on my days when I wasn't working, I was in school doing homework, plus working on the ambulance until I I went through a crisis and, you know, uh, was trying to self-medicate to deal with all of the crazy, the everything. And, uh, um, you know, separated from my wife and my son for a, a while and until, uh, I got back on my feet. And I'm still, fighting. it's a fight. It's a fight. Every day's a fight. Every day. Hey, Hey, the one thing buds taught me, I, even though I didn't make it is life is evolution after evolution, after evolution, take it step by step day by day. And if you go to buds, do the same thing. Don't look in the future too far. or You're going to mess yourself up. You, I learned that from quitting buds. Keep focused on what's in front of you. Take one step at a time. If you know the Lord, pray and, and ask him for help and strength. And, and I mean, that you know, I'm a Christian. I, I was a Christian since I was 14 years old. And one thing I would do, say, man, is, is coming back to the Lord Jesus Christ really is also strengthened me and helped me to, you know, to be who I am. And, you know, um, I think that's a big part of it too, man. Focus on your whole being. If you have a faith that you are involved in before you go in, make sure you know your scriptures, make sure you're strong in that because when it gets dark and all those mind demons are coming at your, your own thoughts and, and the, the devil himself, I believe in evil, man. I mean, it's yeah. all around us. You know, if you don't have the support from your spiritual side, I mean, I look to the Lord Jesus Christ for my strength. I wish I would have back then, but I was kind of turned away from him in my younger days. But, uh, you know, I get my strength through what I learned in buds and through my faith. And believe me, you're at buds and your boat crews there. And there's times where you're helping each other out and supporting each other, but you're also in your head the entire time by yourself. And there's nobody in there, but you and and you, and you You got And you're going to have to face it. And, and, uh, anyways, man, even going through all that, you know, I I got back, my wife and I are together. We're happier than ever, you know, um, congratulations, bro. Like, you know, yeah, a lot of people don't recover, man. You know that a lot of people don't recover. You know, I don't, I don't touch any kind of anything anymore as far as drinking. I'm, you know, uh, I'm, I'm strong in my faith now and I'm working on a bachelor's going to get my master's degree in my, my goal, ultimate goal is, is to work in the ministry and, okay. um, and okay. help people and help people out who are dealing with like addiction and, yep. and, and hard times in life, because my story is so crazy. I mean, my life story, I mean, I could tell you so many more things about you. You heard about my cousin, but you know, I lost my eyesight when I was a kid too, from a traumatic injury. I never knew if I was going to be blind or not. And yep. my, my dad was at my bedside praying and you know, after waiting, my, my eyes self healed themselves, but they didn't know they didn't back in those days. It was like 83. They didn't have any like super fancy surgeries and stuff yeah, that yeah. They do now, but anyway, Man. I mean, I'm telling you, Jake, it's life is a fight. You're always in the fight. You're never out of the fight. No matter what you're working for, go get it, go get, go it. get it, work hard, and if you fall down, get back up. You're not out of the fight until you're dead. So just keep going. And, and that's all I got to say, you know, man, don't, you don't Damn. lose hope. Do not let failure define who you are. You know, I looked myself in the mirror and I said, you know what? Yeah, I didn't make it through buds, but you know what? I'm Jeremy Miguel. Here's all the stuff that I've been through and here's the stuff that I have accomplished. And here's the stuff that I'm going to accomplish and I'm going to get back in the fight and I'm going to keep going and I'm going to keep going until I'm dead until 
God calls me home. <laughs> so, hey, you know, Jeremy, that's I, it. I just want to say thank you a million times over, bro. Like, like we just rolled, like this is going to be a powerful one. Okay. It's yeah, going to be yeah. a powerful one because, you know, there's so many phases and so many layers to it that, you know, I, and it's crazy because you just lived everything that I try to explain to people and you, and, and you still hit the brick wall and didn't make it. Right. Yeah. And I try to explain to people like, man, the reason I'm preaching the army is because in your case, if you had failed out of AFAS, or, you know, RASP, you would have just went to an infantry unit, been doing the same job, and you would have got to go back in a year, and it wouldn't have been a big deal. And let me tell you something, brother. I have a buddy who, who served in Afghanistan, got medevaced out, almost took an RPG, uh, and he's the one who I met him on online playing computer games, you know, all that. <clears throat> but he was like, man, bro, he's like, you got PTSD, dog. You need to get to the VA. He helped me out so much. Uh, his name is Jason Voigt. So shout out to you, brother, if you see this. But, uh, you know, um, he helped me out a lot. And uh, go, going to the VA was good. And, um, you know, talking about this ain't easy, man. No, nah, bro, I'm that's why I'm, I'm thanking you, Jeremy. Yeah. I, I really do. I know, you know, you called me the other day. You called me on uh, Monday or whatever it was, Tuesday, and said, hey, man, I don't know if I can do this. And I said, hey, I, I'm going to tell you, like, you know me. I'm not I'm not a selfish dude. Hey, I'm trying to help other people. If this ain't good for you, then I told you, don't do it, right? Nah, nah. You were like, Hoo man, I think I can do it. I appreciate <laughs> it, man. I, I want to, you know, I man. guarantee you this is a banger. Uh, who ya, it's man. a banger. Who it's it's gonna hey. be a banger, and it's gonna be it's gonna be right next to the Tennessee swimmer one, right? Hey, 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 who ya, man? That's yeah, all I got to say. I'm I might have quit. I might have not made it, but who ya? Because the things I learned, I'm a fighter, and I mean I was a fighter before. Get that Modelo's, bro. Get that oh, Modelo's. Right. The heart of a lion. That's right. I'm I'm a fighter, man. I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm not. Get, look. I've never quit anything in my life except for Bud. So if you're one of those guys out there that says, I ain't going to quit. I'm not a quitter. Man, bro, I ain't never been a quitter. Um, that shit can get you. Yeah, it's, a, it's the monster of monsters. And I'll tell you the army thing. And I, I, like my buddy, I, he's like, man, you would have been Delta by now. He's like, he's like, man, if you, you so like, why'd you go to SEALs? And I'm like, man, don't ask me Hollywood. I was like, I'd Bro, it's Hollywood crazy. and young, and I don't know. But don't knowing know. what I know now, like my son, he's like, Dad, man, what, what do I got to do? I'm like, you ain't going to Bud's. No. And Go to the Army, I man. I was like, if you want to, but he's just got a flat. better opportunity, man. It's just a better <laughs> opportunity. He's got flat feet, man. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I don't think he would make it. I don't, I don't think Meps would let him through. I mean, his feet gotcha. are flat. But gotcha. um, I, I told him straight up, I said, if you're going to go spec ops, go army because you can get infantry airborne and then for whatever reason you don't you don't make it through you know what do they got rasp and at rasp and all that. yeah 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 uh, and if you don't make it through selection you're still going to be jumping out of airplanes and shooting absolutely and stuff. still shooting shit <laughs> yeah if you go in the navy you going to be packing parachutes or you're packing parachutes and or you gonna... sewing you sewing crotch straps on yeah, life yeah. jackets and you're going to be dealing with what dad had to deal with for three and a half years a bunch of the word we used to use was it ends in bags that you mm -hmm. don't you know you, you 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 know and they don't like you because they know that you think you're better than them but I'm like, hey, man, there ain't no shame to go into buds and not making it. Let me tell no. you something. If you can just get to buds you are stronger than like 90 something percent of the population out there. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, absolutely. I'm sorry, but there's to me, the whole buds duds thing. Those are just from failures that don't even have the cojones to try. Absolutely. They have nothing. They have nothing. You've already like Mr. Goggins says, you've already stole their souls. And that's why they're trying to get down on you and get yep. to you because you're already better than them. Even if yep. you failed at buds, you're better than, 90 something percent of the people out there 100 percent. end of story man all right big yeah. jeremy you kick butt um you got my phone number now i mean shit we'll stay in contact absolutely i'm trying to buy murph for you murphy if you hear this anybody know where i believe it's captain murphy at this time or swoop. <laughs> that was swoop. my swim buddy swoop buds class yeah. two uh, 217 
Reach out to him. Tell him my man Jeremy Miguel is looking for him. That's a banger right there, folks. We just hit a home run. Jeremy, I want to say thank you a thousand times over for having the courage to come on here and talk about your journey through SEAL training, your life. I want everybody to understand, man. I don't care how bad you show up, how good a shape you show up in. Man, them demons can get you. Mm. World class. Jeremy, shout out to you. From 217, man, appreciate it. Thank you. All right, folks, listen here. This ain't your average, everyday, run-of-the-mill podcast. We got Jeremy Miguel, 217, classmate. Buckle your seatbelts. Get ready, because this is a crazy one. Enjoy. <laughs>